Assalamu alaikum to the Muslims and greeting to the non-Muslims. I'm just making this video about my conversion story to Islam. Now the story of how I came to Islam is actually short and long at the same time. And what do I mean by this? Well, if I include the actions leading up to it, it becomes longer. And I will include the actions leading up to it, so it will be you know, fairly long, so be warned. Um, first off, I'll start that I've been on the internet in chat rooms and on forums since I was about 11 years old. And I developed an interest in web design and graphics and all these type of things around this age too. And it eventually led me to joining a forum dedicated to graphics design. And after being active on the forum for a while, I was eventually promoted to the rank of a moderator. Now a moderator is a person who you know has the ability to delete posts and to merge posts and to all these things. If you don't know what a forum is, it's a message board where you can post messages and people post comments and all these different things. And I was requested by one of the users who was a Muslim to help him with his website and we both started working on his on his website together. And something happened which I can't you know quite remember what it was. Perhaps it was nine eleven or something that he did to me, I can't remember the and I deleted everything on his website. Very bad thing to do. His retaliation to that was to log onto my moderator account because I was silly enough to use the same password for it. And on the on the forum and he caused, you know, many problems, you know, such as deleting posts and saying many different bad things and that I don't know, you know, he was young at the age too, so we we're both in the age of immaturity. And, you know, so these these events caused problems that last, you know, went on for a couple of years. And I know it's pretty childish, but what more could you expect from a child? And he got one of his friends who was also a Muslim involved too, and they both started verbally attacking me and I attacked them too. You know, we'd make like threats behind the computer screen, which are <laughs> like if you if if you've been on the internet for a while and you've read comments on YouTube and all these type of things, you know that people have a different attitude when they're behind a computer screen. And they'll say different things that they won't say in person. So, you know, skipping past all this age of immaturity and all this, I actually lost contact with the original person, but somehow or another I was still in contact with his friend. And actually we became friends, which is... I, I can't remember exactly how that happened either. Anyway. So during those previous years, I'll just add as a you know side note that I was heavily influenced by my family, who were you know somewhat racist, and they didn't really like Islam. And you know from what I see, they saw women as objects, and you know many different things, which I didn't, which you know, as growing up I started to disagree with. But I'm not trying to you know completely say bad about them completely. You know they were good people at times. I'm just trying to mention some points that influenced my thoughts at that age. But as years went by, I started to mature, and my heart began to soften. I, I felt it began to soften more, and I became more accepting of things, and you know, more willing to understand and look into things. And looking back at it, I feel as if Allah was softening my heart, so He could, so you know, the, Im the seed of Imam could be placed into my heart, Imam. And I started to have concern for the innocent people in the world who were dying unjustly. And two places that caught my attention, which would have caught the attention of many other people, as they were very very hot spots at that time and still this time too were Iraq and Palestine and the more I saw of these places the more I knew that what is being done to these people is wrong these people are being you know pushed out their homes they're being humiliated and after looking into these places you know looking at these places more I started to see more and more about Islam and this is natural because Islam is you know the majority religion in these regions and I had a Christian friend at the time, you know, who when I told him about Islam, he told me many lies. And at the time I, re I accepted it as truth because I trusted him and I didn't know much about Islam. I didn't have an authority to go to and I had these pre you know, I still had these preconceived ideas in my head of what Muslims are. And one of the lies which he told me was Allah is a moon god. Now we all Muslims all know that this and I'm sure a lot of Mus non Muslims too would know that this idea has been refuted and it does not hold weight. Allah himself even refutes it in the Quran where he says more or less that you know do not worship the sun or the moon but turn to God who created them so anyway he told me all these different lies so I narrated these lies which I thought were truth to my Muslim friend as a confirmation and to you know to see what he has to say about it and he would explain and refute and give answers to the claims of the Christian or from anyone else I came across or for any thoughts in my mind he was good, you know, he answered a lot of my questions and, you know, 
he told me to buy a Quran translation, and so I did. And after reading a couple of pages of it, I could not really get into that as the English was a bit outdated. You know, I said like thee and thou and you know, thou hast gone astray and stuff like that. I just couldn't concentrate on that style of writing. And so, you know, it eventually sat on my shelf for about a year. But during that year, you know, putting a psalm a bit to the side, during that year I began to question many things. And you know, I was trying to find the purpose of, of this life. Not necessarily in a spiritual way, but, you know, in how we meant to live and all these type of things. But, of course, eventually it led to a spiritual way. And I even asked a teacher at my school. I, I said this to her. We spend most of our early life studying, you know, to the age of 20 to 25, and then we go on to find a job and work for a few more years, and then eventually we retire. And I said, what do we do if we die before retirement? What happens then? What I meant by this question, you know, is not just that, but why are we working towards, we're working towards like, you know, where we can just relax and do nothing, but it's only a few years, you know, what, what's the point of all this? And her reply to me was more or less, don't ask any questions. And after this, it was not only this incident, but the gathering of my thoughts, I became very depressed and ended up taking a month off of school. And I couldn't see the purpose of life. I was just trying to think about it in my mind, and then eventually it got to the point where I just felt so low. And I pushed it to the, th to the side. And some people can't do this, but... I guess I have like a, an ability to push things off to the side if I if I really want to I can just push it off to the side and not think about it. So eventually I actually came back to school and I, you know having no thoughts on the side I went through my study as usual. And then at the end of that year my interest in Islam began to come back and creeping back. And the Muslim friend who I talked to either he was very busy or you know he did not have much knowledge. So I had to request you know I had to try and find someone a Muslim with more knowledge of Islam. So I requested the help of one of my close friends who was helping me in finding answers to my questions. He knew of some chat, chat room servers and thought he might check uh, for an Islamic room which he found. And at this, you know, at first I was actually too afraid to go there myself as I was afraid that they might be rude to me because of these preconceived uh, notions that, you know, I had of Muslims in my head from TV and from how I was raised and all these kind of things because I never actually met that many Muslims in my life prior to that. And, you know, it turned out, however, that they were very nice and welcoming people. And I eventually went in after a couple of, after a couple of months, and after a couple of months my questions were depleted, and I was convinced that Islam is a true religion, true way of life, the true deen. And I saw that Islam was a religion whose beauty shined even when the times when many Muslims were not practicing and instead they were transgressing the laws of Allah and as a result being humiliated. I was looking for the purpose to, li purpose to life and I found it. I was looking for the best way for us to live and I found it. So I made the declaration of faith Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan muhammad rasulullah I testified that nothing has the right to be worshipped except for Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. That's my story. I can maybe I'll add some things later about it, inshallah. Take care and stay in good health. And wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be upon you.